Okay, hi everyone. I wanted to go over a bearings question that came up in class on Friday, just in case people either want to revisit it or you can look at it if you're at home and you're studying via the internet. So first thing I'm gonna do is read out the question. So a helicopter flies due south for 160 kilometers and then on the bearing of 125 degrees for 120 kilometers. So there's not a lot of information given in the question, but that's the information we've been given. The actual questions are, how far east is the helicopter from the start location? How far south is the helicopter from the start location? And what bearing must it fly on to return directly to the start location? So A and B aren't too bad. C is where it gets a little bit tricky and very bearingy, if that is, is a word. And if it's not, it is no. Okay, so just like we always do, I'm gonna start off by doing a quick sketch to represent the situation and help me make sense of it. So I've got a helicopter right there, very skillfully drawn. That's gonna fly south for 160 kilometers. And then it's gonna fly on a bearing of 125 degrees for another 120 kilometers. So let's say something like that. It's another 120. Okay, and I'll add my bearing in as well. So because we're measuring it from the vertical, I'm gonna say that that's 125 degrees. Okay, so question or part one, part A, how far east is the helicopter from the start location? So on first glance, it looks like we don't have a lot of information to work with. What we do need to do is start drawing in some right angled triangles that will help us to make a little bit more sense of what's going on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a right angled triangle here, like that. I'll perhaps draw this in green up here with my question A as well. There we go, not too bad. Okay, I know that my hypotenuse length is 120. So I'll just say 120 for now. Now, we need this angle here as well. I'll just highlight that in yellow quickly. Now, what we need to do, we need to infer that angle from the first diagram that we drew on the left-hand side. And I'll draw this next bit in red. So if this whole angle here is 125 degrees, and we know that this between here and the 90, that's, well, sorry, between north and east, that's 90 degrees. We can infer from that that the angle here is gonna be the difference between 90 degrees and 125 degrees, which is, of course, 35 degrees, because that's the difference between those two angles. So this is the thing with these bearings questions, you have to do a little bit of, little bit of trickery to get it to do what you want. Cool. And in terms of what the question is actually asking, it's how far east the helicopter is from the start location. So I'm gonna call this length here X. I'll highlight that so you can see it from there to there. So that's gonna tell us how far from the original point to the east the helicopter has gone. So I now need to choose the correct ratio for this triangle. I've been given the hypotenuse. I'm interested in finding the adjacent, which means I'm gonna use the cosine ratio. So cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I'll now fill in what I know from the diagram. Cosine of 35 degrees equals x over 120. A little bit of rearranging, multiplying both sides by 120 will give me x is equal to 120 times cosine of 35. Oh, running out of room. Scroll down a little bit which will give me an answer, and I'll just check my notes so I don't need to actually get up my calculator, uh, an answer of 98.3 kilometers to one decimal place. Okay, super duper. So that's question A taken care of. Now for question B. So question B is asking how far south the helicopter is from the um, start location. So what we can actually do for this one is use the same right angle triangle. So I'll redraw this here in green, just for consistency more than anything. I've used the same color in the diagram. Okay, so what's changed this time? We've got the same internal given angle, which is 35 degrees. We've got the same 
hypotenuse length, which is 120 degrees. What's different this time is that we're finding the length of a different side. We're interested in finding this side here because now we're looking at how far south the helicopter is from the start location. So this one's a little bit different. What we'll need to do for this one to figure out how far south it's gone is find this length on our triangle here and add it to the 160 just there. But what I'll do just to kick us off, I'll find, I'll find my missing side length here. Okay, so this is a little bit different. We've been given the hypotenuse. This time we're finding the opposite, which means we're now gonna use the sine ratio instead. I feel like I keep ducking out of shot, but that's probably not so important as long as you can hear what I'm saying. So sine of 35 is equal to the missing side length over 120. Hang on, I've jumped ahead. I always write the ratio first. We always do that. Sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Feeling what I know from the diagram, don't race ahead. Sine of 35 degrees is equal to length of the opposite, which is y over the hypotenuse 120. Again, a little bit of rearranging will give us side, sorry, side length y is equal to 120 times sine 35. And again, just checking my notes so I don't need to get out my calculator if it'll let me scroll down. Yes, it will. All right, that gives me an answer of y is equal to, I'll get my notes to catch up with where I'm up to, is a 68.8 kilometers to one decimal place. So that can say my distance south is 68.8 plus the 160 kilometers. Oh, I've gone off to the side a bit here. My computer is not catching up with me. Plus it's 160 kilometers uh, just here, which will give me, sorry, it's jumping all over the place for me now. 228.8 uh, kilometers. Okay. And now for the grand, 228.8, great. Now for the grand finale, as it were. Okay, what bearing must a helicopter fly on to return to the start location? Okay, what I'm gonna do now is do a little bit of scribbling in the, uh, the triangle that we started off with. So I'm gonna make a new right angle triangle. I'm gonna start from where the helicopter is now I'm gonna go across to the uh, vertical underneath the start position. I'm gonna finish off my right angle triangle. It's gonna look a little bit something like this. It's getting a little messy, but it's not too bad. It's just to illustrate my point. Okay, this one is a little bit tricky. So what we have here is a new right angle triangle. The distance along the bottom, so I'll call that x1, really could be x2 I suppose from before, but that's the same value as the green x that we had in our triangle up here. No, this is really important. So the temptation is to just say that my side length there is 98.3 kilometers and just plug that straight in. But if you do that, you're using an answer that you've already rounded and it's gonna be pretty close to the correct answer, but it's not going to be exactly there. So what I would say you would do instead, or what I would insist that you would do instead, is instead of calling this side um, 98.3 kilometers, we're gonna use the exact value, which is 120 times cos 35. Okay, now with a sense of inevitability, we can do the same thing by using our answer to B for this one except our other side length is gonna be a little bit a little bit different because for this one, we're gonna to have to take the 160 and add it on to our exact value answer, which is gonna be 120 multiplied by sine 35 this time. Because that was our answer, well, it wasn't our answer to question um, to part B, but that was, that's the exact value form of it. 
So because we're interested in accuracy, that's what we're going to use. Okay, so new right angle triangle. I wanna find this angle here, and I'll highlight that there. I'll show you why in a second. Because it's measuring the distance, I guess it's measuring the angle from the from the west towards the north that you would go. It's not the true bearing answer, but we'll get to that in a, in a moment. So now I've got a new right angle triangle. I'll write my ratio down. And my working's going all over the page, but I think from the online tutorial point of view, it actually probably um, helps a little bit. So we've got tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over um, adjacent. So with my triangle up here, the one, the opposite is the uh, 160 plus um, 120 times sine 35. So to find my angle, I'm gonna do my inverse tan function like I normally would. But instead of the, well, not instead of the opposite, the length of the opposite is 160 plus 120 times sine 35. I'm going to be drawing over my other working out, but that's okay. And that's over the value of the uh, adjacent, which is 120 multiplied by cosine of 35. Luckily, I've used different colors because that's going to get rid of my distance south just there. Okay, to make this work in your calculator, you might have to go pretty crazy with the brackets because you have to separate out well, you have to do inverse tension, inverse function of tan of something to begin with. You've got to make sure you're doing 160 plus 120 times sine 35 as its own thing, as well as putting that all over 120 times cos 35. So to get that, to get that working in your calculator, you do need to make sure you're using your brackets properly for that one. What you can do as well is use the actual numerical answers that you got for questions A and B just to make sure that your real answer is at least a ballpark correct figure. Anyway, so our angle there ends up being to two decimal places, 66.8 degrees. So the actual bearing itself isn't quite there yet. We've got, and I'll just write the, I'm gonna figure out the bearing now as my, um, for my working out. So the bearing is gonna be equal to 66.8 degrees plus 270 degrees. And I'll go over the reason for that in a moment. So your actual final answer is gonna be 336.8 degrees, true bearing. Okay, now the reason that that's the answer, the reason that it's not just 66.8, um, it's because 66.8 measures the difference, and I'm gonna use yet another color on top of all of this. We've just measured this angle here between these two points. So where that blue is there, that's the angle that we've just found. Because we've gotta find the true bearing between this point here that I've done in blue as well, and where the helicopter came from, remember that true bearings are measured from the vertical. So if I do an imaginary vertical line here, that angle is gonna be given by, well, I've got 100, sorry, I've got 90 degrees to begin with there. I've added on another 90, so 180. Now I'm gonna add on another 90, which is 270. And the amount that I add on to that is the amount that we just calculated in the, um, the working out there. So that's where our, our other uh, 66.8 degrees comes from. Okay, brilliant. So one thing that's worth pointing out there as well, assuming that you stuck to the end, if so, well done you, is that this question has been scaffolded for you in, in a way. So you've got, it's asked you how far east the, um, the helicopter's gone, how far south it's gone, and then you've used both of those bits of information to calculate your, um, the bearing it's gonna to return to uh, from, from that point, like from, from, the, from where it ended up. What the question might just say is skip all the A, B, C stuff. It might just straight up say, what bearing must it fly on to return to the start location? And in which case you'd have to draw this diagram yourself. You'd need to figure out what angles that you need to find and how you go about finding the side lengths that work with that particular right angle triangle. So it could be that there's a bit more to do if the question was made more difficult by removing the scaffolding from it.
But as it happens, it wasn't too bad because it stepped you through it. Thanks. <laughs>